Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Bedrock Guide. You might notice something a little bit different over here right out of the gate. This is actually going to be a stream-only project, so if you want to see any of the progress on the volcano here, you're going to have to jump on over to Twitch. Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday every week. We'll check in on it from time to time, but that's not what we're talking about today. We are down here in the Iron Farm, and we are talking about these guys. Our villagers are good for so much more than just creating a village and spawning in golems and cats, and we're going to talk about that today. We have a few goals for this episode. The first one is to talk about every villager type there is possible in the game, and then we are going to try to decide on the final professions for all 40 villagers in this Iron Farm. And last but not least, we're going to roll their trades so we can get the best possible options for each villager. If you're kind of just jumping into this series without having ever seen any of my other videos, be sure to go back and check out the Villager Breeder episode. We talk all about how to breed up villagers. And be sure to check out the episode where we actually build the iron farm because we talk about transporting them and getting them all synced up and all of that stuff. We won't rehash any of that stuff other than talking about how to roll trades so each villager has the best possible options that we want for our villager trading hall setup. If we run around the trading hall here, you might notice that there are one of every single type of job site block so that we can at least talk about every profession possible. But we do know that there are gonna be some that we're gonna have more of like librarians and even some of these one-offs we might end up taking out completely and replacing them with something a little bit more useful for our purposes in this season. But since we do know that we want librarians, let's start with this first one right here. If you right click or tap the use button on your respective device, you will open up the trading interface. You will see a level one librarian across the top there because this is a librarian villager. Each villager has experience just like a player does, and as you trade with them, they will gain more experience and level up from novice, apprentice, journeyman, expert, and master. There are five levels, and every time they level up, they will gain a new trade option. When you go to start trading with a villager, you want to make sure that they have something that you want before you trade with them. Once you trade with them and gain them some experience, their first trades are locked in and you cannot change them after that point. So for example, this librarian has Frostwalker 2 and that's not something that really interests me. So I don't like the trade he has to offer, so we're gonna go ahead and place our glass back down and then we'll break our lectern and then we'll place it back down again. But before we do, one thing to take note of as well, this guy is currently unemployed. You can tell that because he's just wearing a brown coat. He doesn't have any distinguishing features like glasses or a hat. If this guy happened to have a green coat, you've already kind of missed the boat because back in the iron farm video We talked about how you should not have any nitwit villagers in here because they cannot be employed And therefore they will damage the rates of the farm and possibly cause it to not work at all So no nitwits. We want regular villagers. We'll place our profession block back down just like that He will relink with it and offer us a new trade so let's see what he has to offer this time. Bookshelves, that's actually not bad, but I kind of want to save that for one of our last villagers. I want to get something good for a book right off the bat. An easier way that you can roll these trades that you might want to consider is taking a sticky piston, placing it right next to the profession block, and just quickly toggling it on and off. See, he's lost his profession and now he's re-employed. You don't have to worry about placing the glass back down. It's just quicker to do it this way, but you know, you can manually break it as well if you don't have access to slime or a sticky piston. And he's got luck of the C2. I think we're gonna pass on that. Bookshelves again, we'll pass for now. This is the most tedious part of setting up a villager trading system is getting the trades that you want. And honestly, it's the most tedious on librarians because there are so many options options for book trades, and you don't really want duplicates as you go down the road. And that's a keeper right there. Efficiency 5 is a difficult trade to get, so we are going to definitely keep that one. And it also comes with lanterns as one of the trades, which we're going to need some lanterns for our builds throughout the series, so I think this is doubly good. This is a bit expensive though, 64 emeralds and one book for one efficiency 5 book. We'll talk a little bit later about how to get that discounted. We need to fly back over to our sugarcane farm to pick up some paper because we need to trade with that guy to lock in his efficiency five trade. And while we're over here, 
it's a good reminder that we do have this guy right here, Mindelson, our Mending Villager. He's going to stay here. We're not going to move him. And we're probably not going to get another Mending Villager over there because, I mean, let's face it, we already have more Mending books than we're going to need for the entirety of the series. So we don't need any more. And we'll double check, make sure he's still got his Efficiency 5 trade. Perfect. We need 24 pieces of paper. We're just going to toss that in there just like that. And we'll collect one Emerald. And you see the Experience Bar has risen by three spaces there and this villager is forever locked in as an efficiency five in the novice slot now we do have a chance to get some more books throughout this librarian's upgrade process but what i'm looking for most importantly is this first slot right here because it's the only one that you can see straight out of the gate so why not go for a great trade before you start upgrading this would probably be a good time to mention that i'm not going to roll all of the trades for these villagers on camera we're basically going to demonstrate how to do it i'm going to talk about every villager profession and then we'll do a lot of the grunt work off camera because it is very very boring rolling trades. The last thing you should know about librarians before we move on to a new profession type, they need a lectern. We didn't talk about that initially, but that is very, very important. If you want to get a librarian, you need a lectern. And librarians will give you things like emeralds for paper. And once you have emeralds, you can trade them for enchanted books or lanterns or things like glass, compasses, clocks, name tags, things like that. You can also get bookshelves, which will give you an endless supply of books. So you can kind of keep recycling your trades throughout if you do this strategically. Librarians, in my opinion, are probably the most valuable villager in a trading hall because they do help you to upgrade your gear. Our next villager type uses the grindstone, and this is the weaponsmith. These guys are very, very valuable in an iron farm trading hall situation because you can trade iron for emeralds and if you discount them down to one iron for one emerald you will be very very emerald rich very quickly which will then allow you to in turn go over to your librarians and start trading for some great books and things like that so the smith types weapon smiths very very important in an iron farm trading system as the name implies weapon smiths also supply you with axes and swords and you can even get them up to diamond axes and diamond swords as you upgrade them to the higher levels one more thing to note as well and then we'll just keep rolling with our villager types i'm not necessarily going to list off every single item that every single villager type will offer because there is a great resource that i'll leave in the description below where you can go check out the tables for each type of villager and everything they have to trade. Next up, we have the Toolsmith, which is employed by using a smithing table. Also very good for iron farms, has the same exact iron for emerald trade on the level two slot there. The main difference here is they don't offer weapons, they offer tools. So let's say you're going to have a large project, like maybe digging out some or part of an entire mountain. You can come over here to your toolsmith, grab a diamond pickaxe. Maybe it's already enchanted. Maybe it doesn't have the enchantments you want. You can come over here to the grindstone and disenchant that pickaxe, and then come over to your librarians and select your enchantments by trading with any one of these librarians after we've set their trades. This is a fantastic system and probably the best way to do iron farm trading hall combinations. This guy right here, the the Armorer, this is the last villager that I would absolutely say is a necessity in this type of a trading hall iron farm setup because he does offer, again, the iron for emerald trades. We can just let the iron farm run, go grab some supplies and trade for a bunch of emeralds with all of these guys and have plenty to trade with the rest of the villagers. The main difference here, he does not sell tools. He does not sell weapons. He sells armor. So you can get anything and everything from boots, pants, helmets, chest plates, and shields in the iron and diamond varieties as well. That leaves us with 10 more villagers and each of these we're going to go over, but I may not keep each of these professions. So first up over here at the smoker, we have the butcher. A butcher will take raw meat and trade it for emeralds. And sometimes you can get rabbit stew. You can get cooked meat, basically any kind of meat. Just think of this as your local meat market. If you're looking for a good food source, this is something that you could potentially set up. Over here at the cartography table, we have the cartographer. Pretty obvious. This guy will trade you for empty maps, ocean explorer maps, which will help you to find ocean monuments nearby, and a woodland explorer map. 
Woodland mansions are pretty difficult to find, so it might be a good idea for you to pick up one of these guys if you want to go looking for the Woodland Mansion. Over here at the Potion Brewing Stand, we have the Cleric. The Cleric will take rotten flesh and give you a ton of emeralds. So if you have a zombie farm, this might be a good idea to have a few Clerics. You can take those emeralds and trade for things like redstone, lapis, glowstone, enderpearls, and bottles of enchanting. This guy may not be very important to us. We don't have a huge source of zombie flesh, and I don't have great need for redstone dust or lapis because one, we're gonna have librarians, so enchanting is gonna be a thing of the past. We're just gonna put things on books. And redstone, we've got more than we really need, so I'm not all that concerned about that. And enderpearls, I've got other ways that we're gonna get those in the future. And over here at the composter, we have the farmer. The farmer will take things like wheat, potato, carrots, beetroot, and trade them for emeralds. And in return, you can trade for things like bread and pumpkin pie, maybe even some cookies and cake. It sounds delicious. The thing that's most important to me about farmers is their last trades on the master level. At the master level, a farmer will either offer you a golden carrot or a glistering melon. Both are great for enchantments, and golden carrots are honestly a really good food source. Over here at the barrel, we've got the fisherman, and the fisherman will take things like coal and string to trade for emeralds, and with your emeralds you can get, you guessed it, some cooked fish. You can also get things like campfires, enchanted fishing rods, all sorts of things fish related. And this one is a pretty interesting one, the fletching table, which currently in the game has absolutely no use other than employing this guy, the fletcher. He will take sticks and give you emeralds. I feel like that's a pretty good trade. With your emeralds, you can take an emerald and some gravel and get 10 pieces of flint. If you're gonna be setting up something like a gold farm, which we are, that's going to use the portal ticking method which ours is going to, you're going to need a lot of flint and steel. Here's the interesting part. I use a fortune shovel. And so every time I mine gravel, I have a 100% chance of getting flint because I have fortune three. If you happen to use silk touch, this guy might be a little bit more valuable to you because you can trade 10 pieces of gravel for 10 pieces of flint. That's not a bad deal. So yeah, the Fletcher is kind of an interesting predicament. Not sure what I'm gonna do yet because I get a ton of flint anyway. That's also up for you to decide in your own circumstances. If you use a Silk Touch shovel, definitely have Fletchers. Over here at the Cauldron, we have the Leather Worker and he will take leather and trade it for emeralds. And in return, you can take your emeralds and buy things like leather pieces of armor. And a lot of them might be dyed. So you can get different colors of armor here. And then you can also pick up some leather horse armor and a saddle if that interests you as well. Just a couple more villagers left to go over before we decide on our final layout. Over here at the stone cutter, we have the stone mason. The stone mason will take clay and trade it for emeralds, and with emeralds you can buy things like bricks. You can also buy chiseled stone bricks. You can also buy andesite, diorite, or granite, which I'm, I'm not sure why you would do this. The world already has too much of it anyway. The real selling point for this guy is if you are interested in terracotta, he does offer one of the 16 colors of terracotta or glazed terracotta at the expert level trade. And another huge selling point for this guy, at the master level, you are either going to get a block of quartz or a quartz pillar. If you plan to do a lot with either of those types of blocks in your builds, this might be a good idea to have a stonemason. And last but not least, over here at the loom, we've got the shepherd. The shepherd will take one of four types of wool, either white, gray, brown, or black wool, and will trade it for emeralds. With your emeralds, you can buy shears, so that you can go get more wool to trade for more emeralds. And you can also trade dye for emeralds. Once you start unlocking more levels of the shepherd, you will get different types of carpets, different colors of wool. He will also offer beds and banners. Again, a lot of these trades will depend on what you're gonna be doing in your world. Some people might need a lot of terracotta. Some people might need a lot of wool. If that's you, then kind of base your villager trading setups on those parameters. Basically what I'm saying is that you can customize this however you want. The only things that I would say are necessary for an iron farm villager trading setup are librarians because you want those enchantment books and the three smith types that we've already gone over. Well, that's not good. I was standing here doing some trading with some villagers trying to lock in my librarians before we move on and a ninja creeper decided to jump down on me. Thankfully, my no death streak is continued. Okay, well, I guess we got to fire up the breeder again. 
Okay, after that little mess, we've got our villagers back in place and we've actually rolled a few more trades and got these locked into what we want. We're currently on this villager right here. We only have a few more to go. We might end up rounding the corner and keeping these five as librarians as well, but I still haven't decided that yet. But I'm actually live on stream on Twitch right now and Prowl is hanging out in the chats. And he's instructed me to go down into my iron farm storage and I'm dreading what I'm what I'm about to find. So here we go. We're going to go in the tunnel. And what are we going to see? What? What is this? Please dispose of this piece of trash. A volcano seems like the perfect place for it to die. <laughs> Infinity worse than mending. Oh my goodness. Let's see. What's it got on it? Flame one, unbreaking three, power five, infinity, punch two. This is great. Um, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna do that. We're gonna do that, and then uh, here we go. Three, two, one. Boom! That sign's trash, that sign's trash, and so is that item frame. We don't need any of those tainted items, uh, but we can clean off this bow a little bit. It's a little dirty right now, uh, but we'll go clean it. Now, this is the second bow that Prowl has had to give me that uh, we're just going to change the name. This one, he had some crazy, kooky, weird name that had mending associated with it. We don't want that, and now it's named Captain Sparrow. That's the perfect name for a bow. So we're gonna go over here and uh, we'll, we'll clean this off a little bit, make it brand new and shiny and the most perfect bow you've ever seen. And then we'll have a backup for, uh, you know, not when we die, cause we haven't died yet uh, in 2021, but for whenever this bow decides that it's going to meet its end, we'll have another one waiting for us, which honestly probably won't happen because, you know, Infinity bows last for a long time. So here we go. This one is going to be called Winfinity. Boom. How do you like that, Prowl? You guys might notice a little bit of progress here with our volcano. I've had a stream between now and the last clip that you saw. And uh, we've done a little bit of work down here as well. We have all of our villagers in place. We've got them locked in with their professions and trades and all of that stuff. We ended up keeping 15 librarians and five of each of the smith types, which left us with 10 villagers to figure out here at the end. And I kept a cartographer, and I don't know that I'm going to keep this guy. We'll keep him for now, but his, uh, his journeyman trade is... Uh, an emerald and i was really hoping for a woodland mansion map so we might need to fire this guy and get a uh, another cartographer in here at some point uh then we went with uh four fletchers just because i thought it would be fun maybe if we could get some tipped arrows at some point and if we happen to need any flint it's an option then we also kept uh four of these farmers i'm really hoping for golden carrots and glistering melons so hopefully we'll get some of those with each of these guys and uh, we also kept a leather worker. Figured maybe at some point I would make some fake pirates out of armor stands, and it would be really nice to have easy access to some leather armor just to dress those guys up. That kind of explains the thought process behind why I kept those certain villager professions. Now, we need to wait for the sun to go down because we have to go zombie hunting. The very next part of this episode, we are going to go and cure these villagers but first we need to zombify them for instance if we come down here to our very last librarian if you remember this guy is our efficiency five villager and it costs 64 emeralds in one book and that is way more than i'm willing to pay for an efficiency five book we're going to transform this guy into a zombie and then we're going to cure him and he should give us a discount because he's so happy to be back to a regular villager We'll do that several times until he's down to one emerald trades, hopefully, and we'll see what we can get. All right, so we've got a zombie friend here. He's got a yellow gold helmet on, so he should survive during the daylight here. Uh, I, I had to take my helmet off because thorns. Don't want to harm this guy yet. Yet. So the way this is going to work is we are going to hook up our minecart track down to the spot right here that we've already pre-set up for our zombie curing stations. So here's how this works. Our minecart will roll here and turn right and stop right here. If we break the glass, these two uh, villagers are going to get zombified. When we have cured them and they're ready to go back to being regular villagers full time, we can flip this switch and send the zombie back on its way. But rather than sending him that direction, because that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, we can flip this lever and switch the rail. Boom, send the zombie onto the next pod of villagers. So what I 
think I'm gonna do, we are gonna start with our Smiths right here because I do wanna get their trades down from four iron for an emerald all the way down to one iron for an emerald. So basically we're getting a one for one trade. Anytime we get a golem in here that goes down into our storage, we're gonna get a lot of emeralds out of that. All right, are you ready to go? Here we go, boom. I'm gonna, oh gosh, I'm gonna, I can't afford to die. I haven't died yet this year. Get onto the minecart track, please. Please just make sure you are on hard mode if you're going to do this, because if you go to zombify your villagers on normal mode, they got a 50 50 chance of actually dying. If you do it on easy, they're 100 percent going to die. And if you're playing on peaceful, you're not going to have zombies anyway. So it's a moot point. Hard mode is the only surefire way to guarantee you're going to get a zombie villager. So just take it on up to hard mode. And when you're done, you can swing it back down to peaceful or whatever you play on and push and a nudge and off he goes. We have four hearts left. Still haven't died. Okay, he's down into the little chamber there, ready to give our zombie villagers or future zombie villagers a hug. So here we go. We're gonna break the glass. Is this gonna work? Okay, okay, now we got it. Now we got it. There we go. So the first one. Yay. There we go. We got two zombie villagers. What I had to do, uh, he was not quite in the corner. So I placed the glass down here. I broke the profession block. The water started flowing. He pushed forward, put the profession block back down, broke the glass and bada bing, bada boom. Our zombie starts attacking. Stop hitting me. That's mean. I've got to prepared for us a splash potion of weakness and two golden apples so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go over here and kind of aim for the middle smile boom so those guys all have the effect we can feed that guy and we can feed that guy and here in just a few minutes we should have some perfectly cured villagers that will instantly get transformed back into zombie villagers maybe we'll be able to check their trades before uh before they do we got our villager back so let's see what do we got what do we got hey oh this guy is discounted to one emerald all the way across the board except for right here at the bell we might be able to get a better discount than that let's see what he's got same thing 11 for the bell three for the axe that's not bad all right so we've zombified our villagers one more time we're going to try to discount their trades yet again but one question that i had while i was streaming this uh because i'm actually still streaming now is uh, what if we were to put a one zombie and one zombie villager in the middle above the farm to cure and get discounts for every single villager in this farm. That's a great idea. If you're not concerned about getting permanent discounts, then that would be way easier than what we are about to do. So rather than putting a villager zombie villager in the middle and getting widespread discounts temporarily, we are gonna go around this entire farm and we're going to zombify every villager and cure them so that their trades are discounted permanently. Okay, both of these guys are back to normal now. We've sent our zombie on over to the next stop, and we've actually transformed these guys into zombies four times, cured them four times, and we should have max level discounts on every single trade, so nothing will cost more than one of anything. And this is permanent. We've already talked about this. This is 100% permanent. So we go over here, one coal for an emerald, one emerald for an ax, one iron for an emerald, one emerald for a sword, and so on and so forth. Everything is super duper cheap. One last thing that we should talk about as well is if we happen to go in here and trade iron for emeralds or emeralds for axes, whatever, if we max out the trade to where there's a red X, we can't trade any more with this guy until he restocks that item, he will raise the price temporarily, but it will go back down to that one thing discount. This is permanent. Even if he does raise the price temporarily on you for trading too many times, it will go back down to that one emerald, one iron, one coal, whatever it is, it will go back to that discounted price permanently. But guys, that's going to do it for today. I hope you learned a little something about villager trading, whether it's what kind of professions are offered in the game and how to get discounts, or maybe you learned about rail placement and proper placement of zombies and trying to get them to zombify villagers. Whatever it is, leave a comment in the comment section. We'd love to hear about something that you learned. Be on the lookout for some more progress on this volcano. Again, this will likely be an exclusive stream only project. So I hope you'll stop on over to Twitch and hang out with us every 
every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video and subscribe for more Bedrock Guide content just like this. But thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.